Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So today's video, we have a mix of a few different things going on. First thing is, silage pit. We're going to open it. This is our 2022 silage pit. So first and second cut of silage, both went in here. So it's quite a big pit of stuff. And uh, yeah, it'd be nice to get it open and see how we're going to get on with it. The bottom pit down below, which was 2021 second cut silage, it is empty more or less. I don't think there's even enough to do this evening. So we're going to get cracking on this and get it open. Uh, a lot of sunshine, so we kind of step into the sun, we're not going to see very much, but we'll see how we get on. I'll get a bit of footage, hopefully, we'll get it open. It's nice stuff. Let's see. All right, so the big tires is off. That's kind of the easy bit. Now for the fun bit. Lifting off these dirty <laughs> bags. We just call them bags. But uh, yeah, it's not too many. We lift a few off the side each side and uh, the bit lock at the front. And uh, we then just take, there's, a, there's about 20 tires we'll take off just uh, at the very front of the pit. And uh, it'll be go time on turning back the couple and seeing what it's like. All right, so we have all the tires all the bags, everything is off. We're gonna just pull the cover back and see what the story is. Any water line here. I tell you what I noticed as well. We've a good few trees we were planted here by a neighbour many years ago, and they're actually a very nice feature. But uh, the leaves usually always blow off the trees in the autumn as normal, and they usually blow away. But because it's been so wet, there's a huge build up of leaves on the silage pit, which. We don't usually see, you never usually see that, that much leaves in the pit. They usually blow down, they blow off, they blow out in the field, they blow around the yard, they make their way away from here. But it's been so wet the whole October that they've just stuck to the silage pit. So it's just something a little bit, uh, a little bit different and unusual. So, see if we can find the end of this. Hmm, smells nice, that's how we go by. Definitely smells nice. That looks very nice. There is a lovely, lovely smell of that. I see, I don't know how, how well you can see it or not. But, yeah, so the camera keeps turning off on me. For some reason, I'm not really sure. But yeah, it is absolutely beautiful. Nice and dry and smells absolutely fantastic. Couldn't be happier with that. So we're gonna get the cover back with another look at it when we have the cover completely back and see. Uh, we usually have, Look at that, good right into the wall. There's usually a little bit of bad on this side here, but it is good right the whole way to the wall this year, and no sign of any spots on it. All right, so we've peeled it all back. Even the little dips here that usually can be a little bit uh, on the iffy side is 100%. See what it's like in this corner. Perfect. So, couldn't be happier with that. That's absolutely perfect. All right, so at least we have it all peeled back. It's ready to go this evening if we need it. And yeah, could not be happy with that. Absolutely perfect. All right, so we're in at a feedlot here, not far from where we're staying. So it's a feedlot that we have visited many, many times in the past, known as Steak City, uh, which is quite, quite ironic. Uh, yeah, three large sheds on this feedlot. Now you can see I'm just in one of them now at the moment. It is very long. Uh, it's got 25 pens in it. The shed itself holds in around a thousand cattle. So yeah, this, this feedlot is feeding around a thousand, uh, uh, around 3,000 cattle, which in itself isn't, isn't that big for a lot of parts in America. But in this area, which we are in, it is mostly just grain uh, that is grown. There's not much livestock. So it's the biggest uh, the biggest feedlot in this area that we know of anyway. So 
Uh, yeah, we, we come, we visit it every year, see what's going on and see what changes they've made. Uh, what they're doing at the minute, and we'll see that in a few minutes, uh, they've actually built uh, one of the, the, the sheds themselves, they've, they've tore down the, the timber walk on it and they've started to, to redo it and, and rebuild it. Uh, sheds are all timber, as you can see, with it galvanised uh, or just like sheeted on the sides and on the top. Uh, and yeah, seems to work okay, it's just the way they're done over here. There's not big steel bills and uh, the climate's probably that dry that the timber will last a long time anyway. Um, cattle are all these Angus uh, Angus type cattle, they're all, they would be all squeezed, so they're bullocks, but then they all get hormoned. So yeah, they're, they, they don't have much fat in them. They all, they're, they're not that tall, but they're beefy and stocky and uh, they would flesh out very well with the hormones. Um, the feed itself will be a mostly, uh, you can see there's, uh, distillers you can smell the distillers in it uh, there is a lot of grain in it uh, a lot of corn in it and uh, that's where the, the biggest energy source would come from they also feed uh, soybean and uh, there's corn silage as well uh, or maize silage so yeah nice mix uh, they also I'll have to we'll have we look and see just exactly what else they're feeding but in I'm only just here so in past years They've been feeding grains and, and different other feeds as well, which which makes it up. But we'll check that out shortly. But yeah, big shed, a lot of cattle in it. Uh, the sheds are slatted, pretty much like at home. So uh, nothing new there. Uh, there is rubber on a lot of the slats, but I see some of it has been pulled out. So yeah, it's just I suppose what they're doing. Uh, you see the. The rubber itself is, uh, the, the dung is sticking to it. Uh, the dung is quite sticky and seems to be sticking to it and caking on it a little bit. So uh, maybe it, you can see some of the rubber here pulled, pulled out. Um, so I don't know, it may not stick like that if the rubber wasn't there. It, uh, it, 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 it might clean better if it was just the slats. But yeah, we'll have a little walk down and see what else we can see. Just walking down along, uh, the one thing I notice is that uh, cattle are quite quiet, so they, they don't know me, you know the way cattle, if you're feeding them every day they get to know you and someone strange comes in they get quite jumpy, well these aren't like that, they're very inquisitive and just smelling to see what's going on or who I am, uh, so yeah, the, the feed, uh, whatever they're on, uh, seems to have them quite settled. Uh, also heifers and bull bullocks are both mixed together in the pens and the heifers get hormone just the same as the, the bullocks, so yeah, the heifers flesh up just the same and uh, yeah there's not much in the lines of uh, not much in the lines of of going over fat here uh, they'll all beef up and uh, yeah the the way they walk it is they feed them for a certain number of days no matter what and then the pen is cleared out you know they're gonna they've done what they're gonna do and that's it yeah so yeah nice to see it uh, just to have a little look out and see the landscape that we have around here it's nice rolling fields not too much in the lines of hills but there is a, a slight roll to them uh, there you can see the maize has been all cut off this over the last month or so so yeah a lot of it is cut there is a few bits still left to cut i'm hoping to get some footage over the the next few days uh, of somebody doing a bit of cutting uh, on, on this trip but we'll see how that works out uh, the other thing too is a lot of windmills have went up here over the last number of years and uh, yeah i suppose it's just making use of the 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 wind that there is here in this area it's quite flat and open so it does get it there's nearly always a breeze and uh, i suppose it's just uh, another source of revenue for the farmers to to have it uh, the windmills have gotten bigger over the last few years too which uh, yeah they weren't just as big when we uh, maybe five six years ago when they started going up first but yeah so just down the shed here where they're replacing the timber on the roof uh, yeah that's all really they're replacing is the timber on the roof uh, the penning out of the, the pens themselves and the gates and everything feed barriers uh, you know all that end of it staying the same the old slats are staying on it as well but they are replacing the the, the robomatic so i suppose that'll 
that's purely the issue that they've had to the other side with the mask seem to come apart and everything. Um, drinkers are oh, well, quite similar to what we have at home. Uh, there is a step here built in just out from the drinker, which uh, the idea of that is to stop the cattle from backing up too close and dunging into the drinker. So uh, we did do that on some of we did do that on some of our uh, pens at home. It has helped, hasn't stopped it enough. Maybe we should have kept it out another little bit. Uh, that does look to be slightly further bears now that we see it, but uh, it is something that we could rectify in the future. Um, pen size is they're about 40 foot by 40 foot square, so yeah, quite a quite a decent size uh, a pen. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's that. Okay, we'll go up now and we'll have a look at the the diet feeder. So you can see what I was talking about over the other side, where the the mat and all seem to be seem to be coming up in different places. Uh, there is there, it's just all breaking up. I suppose it's been in quite a while and. Uh, yeah, the rubber will degrade and eventually it will fall apart. Alright, so we're just on the top end of the shed here that is getting the, the refurbishment. Uh, this end of it's just not getting done, the last number of pens. But uh, some smaller cattle here, I just don't want to startle them too much, so I'm just going to kind of come up on them here quite slowly. Uh, diet feeder, a little different than what we have at home. She's a self propelled machine as such, uh, built on a very American looking truck here. Uh, Stick City is the name of the feedlot, as I mentioned. The the mixer, it's quite a big mixer. I'm trying to see what the, the weight, 17,000 pounds, is the weight that she will hold. So yeah, quite a big machine. I uh, don't know if I think it just discharges on the one side. We'll kind of just go around nice and slowly and check it. I do not want to annoy these guys. Um, yeah, just as charges on the one side. Rotomix is the make and it's a 620 16. So yeah, we'll have to do a bit of Googling and see what exactly the the capacities of it is. Uh, these cattle do seem to be on a slightly different rash. There's a lot more corn stalks uh, mixed up in this feed. So it's obviously uh, a beginner ration of sorts. And uh, yeah, uh, the cattle, they, they're, they're cross between Angus there's Hereford in them as well. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a mix just of, of different breeding in them, but that's basically what, what all the cattle are. And uh, yeah. Okay, let's see what else we can see. So this is a bit unusual. Try to run the mix up. It's a John Deere 70, a 22 wheel drive. In fairness, you don't see many. You used to see a lot of these two wheel drive years ago. In the bigger tractors over here but you don't see it that often now so this is a bit of a rarity uh, and a novelty to see it the small wheels on it very much uh, looks different has got green cell and uh, yeah it still be a very usable tractor uh, i think we've got some uh, holding cattle facilities in here so we maybe have a quick look at those okay so quick look at the holding facilities so cattle come in then the far side there's a gate here that swings around closes the gap in as you can see it, it comes all around this way and narrows the the area in for the chute the chute itself is curved so yeah the cattle on a curved chute do tend to keep walking around they can't see the end of it so yeah curves right around here into uh, a very elaborate looking crush uh, all hydraulics the other levers here so it all squeezes them in and doors close front doors close a uh, hydraulic arm here comes up to hold the animal for treating them and uh, yeah plenty of plenty of tech on it looks quite old but it uh, looks to be a good job so just below the corn silos we're just at one of them here you can see uh, there's an auger takes the corn out and uh, the logger then takes it up and drops it down into a crushing mill which then puts in the crushed corn into another auger, drops it into the wagon, the feeder wagon. So another one of these feeder wagons here. A uh, couple of things I noticed, which is a little different than at home. Uh, there's a dewormer granular form that you can mix into the feed to warm the cattle. So no taking them out, <coughs> excuse me, or uh, doing anything with them. And there's also a granular, uh, it's like a, antibiotic powder 
which obviously they're mixing in and giving to the cattle at some point so it's a bit different than home you're not allowed to do that at home so as you, see, as you can see it there it's a ctc powder uh, so yeah a little different than at home um but yeah well, it's just interesting to see how it's done uh, on the other side of the world all right so a bit of drone footage that i took whilst uh having a look around the feedlot and uh yeah, nice little drone footage, just kind of gives you a little bit of a view of uh, where the feedlot is situated and uh, some of the landscape around it. So you can see uh, the the one shed here that was getting all the construction done to it and uh, the other two then that's here. Uh, the middle one looks to have older sheeting on the roof, so maybe it'll be next for getting the revamp. But uh, yeah, who knows? It was really windy day, I remember, when I was taking this footage, so I uh, just had to be very careful with the drone. Um, some trees, you can see them kind of around the place a little bit, but uh, as a whole there's not many trees, not many ditches around, it's not like at home at all, but uh, yeah, it's just how it is. Uh, some machinery parked around, there was a large John Deere on tracks, and uh, you can see the slurry tanker, a large slurry tanker, a triaxle tanker just uh, the far side of it, and a big cultivator on the deer as well. Uh, it's a case cultivator, there seems to be a lot of these case cultivators floating about, so I think that Case may have bought up one of the, the cultivator manufacturers and maybe uh, starting to sell them because a lot of John Deere guys seem to be buying the, these Case cultivators. Um, yeah, here's the big two-wheel drive Dio on the mixer and uh, yeah, just kind of give a little bit of a fly, uh, a fly by now on the on where they store some of the feed. Uh, two corn silos here to the right hand side. They're filled with uh, just non-ground maize corn uh, large pit of stuff here that we're just flying over we'll talk about it in a second uh, there's a, another pit here with all the feed stuffs in it and um, yeah a, a large John Deere uh, a large John Deere loader then that does the loading this is the, the feed stuffs it, from what I can make out I don't think it's corn silage, I think it's corn stalks that uh, has been chopped and insiled. Uh, there's a water being spread out of the process. I'm not 100% sure what is actually going on with it, but they are insiling it anyway, and it will be used at some point, I'd say, as the feed or as a roughage uh, at, at, at some stage. Uh, you can see the, the, there's a, a, a big pile of ma ground maize meal here straight in front of us. Uh, the other pile just to the right, it's actually the cobs of the grain, so they're there and they're actually used as a, a roughage as well. And the other stuffs here in the background, it's a wet feed. It's actually a byproduct of making uh, ethanol. So after you've used the grain of the the corn for uh, you know the process is done to get the ethanol out of it, uh, you're left then with this byproduct, which is actually more valuable uh, to feed than. Uh, prior to, to taking the ethanol out of it. Uh, it's 110%, 115% the the feed quality of corn. So it's actually very sought after and a very good feed. So on to a bit of corn cutting that we just happened to stumble across whilst driving from the town of Ohio, Illinois and uh, the town of Walnut, Illinois. Uh, we spotted combine walking out in the field, pulled in to have a look and uh, yeah, seen a really, really nice operation going on. Um, lovely John Deere combine, a couple of John Deere tractors, chaser bins, and a couple of trucks then drawing the grain away. So really, really nice operation. And we pulled in, we probably stopped for maybe about 20 minutes, half an hour, just to see what was going on. We were chatting to one of the, the guys uh, who uh, was in charge of the operation. Uh, it is a company called Johnston Precision from memory, I think that's what they are. So I might Google them, see if I can find them, and uh, I'll email them all in this video. Uh, but yeah, really nice guy, chatting to him for a few minutes, uh, explaining just some of the things they were doing, and we were asking where we were from, and had a nice conversation with him. And uh, yeah, it was nice to, to stop off and to, to get the bit of footage of, uh, of, of it all working. So uh, yeah, I think I'll just leave you with this bit of footage, put a bit of music into it, and we'll see you in the next video. Hold me close till I get up. Time is barely on our side. I don't want to waste what's left. The
storms we chase are leading us And love is all we'll ever trust Through the sun rays And on and on